let's start with the with the obvious thing. Um, I'm not Celine. Uh, Celine couldn't make it, unfortunately. They had a quick on a very short notice uh, due to a personal issue. Um, so I'm here. It's a it's supposed to be a very personal speech um, because it guides along how she founded and uh, evolved and developed MangoPay and Litchi, um, both uh, French companies um, based in Paris, and her experience with a bank that in 2015 actually took over the majority share in her startup. Um, and then the timer is not running, by the way. Do I have to do something? <laughs> no, I'll just leave it. It's fine. I'll just shout if I'm over the time. <laughs> um, so. I don't have any of these personal experiences. I've been working with her for over a half a year now. Um, so I think we share the same views by now. Um, so some of these things might be a third person view on what she actually wanted to say. So what is this about? This is about how the relationships between startups and banks are evolving, can be evolving, and how she and uh, everyone in our company kind of things should be evolving. Because we've been in a time where uh, there's a lot of companies coming up um, defined as fintech startups, uh, a majority or a part of the share of them uh, crowdfunding or crowd lending platforms, crowd investing platforms. And um, they, they all kind of came in to, to take their own little field of the financial markets and were always seen as rivals in the beginning. There was the new kids on the block. They also came, came in with a big bang, announced themselves as the big rivals that do a lot of things better than the banks and uh, will take the, the customers away from them. Um, so what, uh, maybe a little bit of a background um, for the development of the company and the group that's now Lychee Group. So Celine founded a uh, crowdfunding, or <laughs> it, wasn't even uh, it wasn't even called that way. Uh, it was a platform to actually collect money on a private basis. Uh, it's called Lychee.com. Um, you have a wedding coming up, you have a big birthday party coming up, and you wanted to collect uh, money from a 100 people or something, and you didn't want to run around collecting cash. Um, it wasn't set out to be somewhat of a crowdfunding platform in the beginning, but it turned out to be the biggest interest of the clients on the platform. So they started develop uh, developing it into um, a website where you can publicly open up these collection pots and then collect money from people that you also don't know. Um, over time, the requirements for the payments of these platforms, um, the re regulatory requirements evolved, and in well, in the position of, of finding a, a partner that would do that for them, uh, they weren't able to find anyone that would suit their needs directly. They didn't want to have the same appeal. We're a fintech now. We're dealing with money. Uh, we don't want to partner up with a big bank. We want to have something more uh, more innovative that that maybe we just have to build our own. Um, they built MangoPay, it wasn't called MangoPay in the beginning. Um, it's now a separate company in the same group, and they built it out of their own needs. So that's the, that's the two steps she took. She founded a uh, crowdfunding company, had the need to actually develop their own um, payment processing company, founded a different company for that, collected it in a group, and now they're working side by side in, in the same group. So 2015, um, it's, it's called Exit here. It was. Uh, <laughs> It, was, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't the regular exit negotiations that took down. I'm getting into that uh, a little bit later. Um, it was a very very gentle and slight exit, so to say, because the, the people from, from Arkea, um, they were in the company for, for, I think, two to three years in the board already, um, influenced the decisions that the Litchi group took, and then by 2015 made a very surprising offer uh, that she took. Okay, so let, let's let's maybe <laughs> have a look at what happened. So um, in the beginning, the crowdfunding platform was there. She was suddenly considered a fintech startup without really ever wanting to go that direction. The whole uh, term of, of funding, crowdfunding, the crowd phenomenon, the fintech name, it was branded while she was already working on the platform. And from the outside, especially if you read a lot of the uh, news and, and, and articles about this field, it looked a little bit like this. And the only difference is that there was not just one little guy. Uh, instead, there were thousands and ten thousands of little guys trying to push this big Goliath uh, out of the ring. Now, she supposedly was one of them without her wanting that in the beginning, and had to kind of think um, from day one, like, how do I, how do I want to appeal to the banks? Um, now, a lot of startups that I know, and I'm from Berlin, um, which is very disruptive also in the fintech area, a lot of startups chose the path to also appeal as, hey, big banks, you're too old, you're too rusty, you're not doing things right, I'll be the new shiny little guy that all your customers come to, and I'll do it right. Uh, so it was an aggressive approach from day one, and she thought, 
maybe I should take a different different road. Um, she trying to try to think about how does it look for the for the banks. Uh, I guess this picture kind of sums it up. Um, they were up there, very comfortable. Um, they had their their friends at McKinsey telling them, "Hey, you're doing a trillion after tax profits. You just sit up there and and chill." Um, there's some companies that will start to build on their own construction sites down there, but you can just watch them and see what happens. Um, it might not be true for all the banks, and but this is definitely the picture that all the fintech startups and all, a lot of the crowdfunding and financing uh, startups painted about the banks, that they're just sitting up there lazy and uh, seeing what happens. And if something happens, maybe you can throw rocks at them down there or something. <laughs> um, and then she imagined, what do I look like? Like, if, if you're sitting up there, what do I look like? Why are the banks either not reacting at all to whatever the fintechs are doing or the crowdfunding platforms are doing, or why do they react in a very hostile way? Um, looks like this, she imagined. <laughs> um, so you're sitting up there, and this, this young little boy climbing your building, um, you don't really know what he's doing to do when he's actually coming up there. Uh, and the first reaction, usually, uh, from the bank side is also to say, okay, maybe I can stop him from climbing my building. Maybe I can make sure he never gets up. Um, there are, I mean, as of 2015, there were counted between 10 and 15,000 startups that considered fintechs. Um, I don't know the, the portion of that that is actually crowd-related, but uh, it's definitely a growing portion. And um, all of them were climbing, and the banks never really knew which one of them is to be taken serious and which one is not. Um, so instead of taking this, uh, this approach of positioning yourself as one of these hostile little kids that's trying to throw you off your building, um, she thought about how, what's the, what are the things that we actually have in common? Uh, how can I approach banks? And I mean, I had, she had contacts um, to, to board members of banks, including uh, the Crédit Mutuel, um, and, and trying to make them understand why I'm climbing their building and why I'm not dangerous for them and how we can actually exist side by side and find points that we can work on together and instead of just fighting each other, and especially in the public, uh, public relations area. Um, so they have a lot of common. Um, they, they have the same kind of products. Every the startups usually choose a niche, but the, the banks have tried to cover all of them over the last decades. Um, they, they share the same kind of interest in the customer base they have. Uh, when our customers want to have return on their investments, they uh, want to have securities, um, they, they want to feel secure with the partner they choose. Um, and they, they definitely share a lot of technology. Uh, the, the bank's technology might be a bit older, but the things that the startups in, in the crowd investment field develop were not completely uh, new in the terms of what they actually built. It was just a new approach to how the users can use it. Um, so she, she actually, instead of fighting against uh, the banks that try and do the same things now, and there are a lot of banks that came up with, um, or right now at least launched, um, crowd lending platforms, including the Commerzbank in Germany, um, and, and just try to do the same thing and a little dust off their, their old products. Um, so she actively approached um, a contact at Credit Mutuel and um, asked him to be part of her board. Um, which was a surprising request, I guess, in the beginning. Um, I mean, they knew each other. It was a longer relationship that they already shared. Um, but it was definitely not something that he would expect, I guess. And so he took, but he was, he was pleasantly surprised, so he took those at the spot. And for, for a long time, guided or at least gave his opinion on what the uh, Lichi group should do and shouldn't do and how they should do certain things, um, passing on knowledge that he, even as a, as a member of the bank, uh, experienced with his big bank business doing mistakes that he, he could actually save Celine and, and uh, his, uh, her colleagues from doing and kind of saw the parallels of, of how maybe he wasn't there then, but how we, uh, maybe the, the, the growth period of these banks looked like and how many mistakes they made. Um, so it was a valuable partner in the board. And um, at uh, the second series of financing, he, he, was, he was already a solid member um, and, and always in the meetings, always giving his opinions, very, very valued. And the time came that Celine and, and her partners chose to actually do a Series C funding, um, which <laughs> he didn't say anything in the beginning, but I think from the, from the day on that they made this decision, he decided to uh, 
intervene last minute and make an offer to actually buy the majority stake in the company, which he did. And it was based on this long um, journey that they took together. And it was, it was not a journey where this old grumpy banker is sitting in the board of, of a startup that he's afraid of ever um, stealing customers or doing something that would disrupt his, his business and therefore maybe even blocking decisions or anything. Instead, due to, but it was very personal. The reason why he was so open for this was a very personal approach that she chose. It, has, it had nothing, not nothing, but it had little to do with how he saw the, the group and how Superior felt to the, to the startup. It was more her taking very good care of and very personal care of this person and try to understand all of his fears, all of his colleagues' fears, that he kind of was the, the, um, the entry door to understanding how does this bank's board work? How, what do they think? And uh, not just say you're all old and, and wrong, <laughs> uh, but instead inviting them in and um, listening to whatever they wanted to do. And she took the, the offer in the end, um, and from that point on made sure that all this partnership, even though, of course, legally after the acquisition, uh, the bank could have done a lot of things that they promised not to do, but made very sure before they signed this deal to have personal buy-in from, from the people that would be involved uh, to pick out exactly the fields that the bank can help and support this startup and also to pick out the fields that they are not so good at so she could bring in this knowledge and make them understand how they're doing business. Um, which led to, the, to a very uh, happy, <laughs> says uh, Lichi and Credit Mutuel with a heart, a happy takeover um, because there was, it was not a lot of topics that the two mingled that weren't really meant to be mingled in. There was a, a technology exchange, of course, a lot of the infrastructure that the banks use that would have to be bought externally for, very much, uh, for a lot of money could have been used now, are used now by the Lichi group. Um, there's, of course, uh, legal help that they got uh, in, in terms of compliance and, and, and uh, their legal actions, their contracts and everything. Um, so a lot of fields that they felt like they would have to buy more if they get it externally were taken over by the bank and, and helped with by the bank. But they never touched any of the core product areas or any of the customer-facing areas uh, where they knew they would really be just giving bad advice if they would do. Instead, what they did is they took a lot of uh, design and product development um, hints and ideas from the startup, uh, developing things internally um, that, that they wouldn't have done without this impact, uh, this input from, from the startup. Um, <laughs> people by people. Um, from people. But exactly what she said. It's, it's, uh, that's why it's such a personal speech, and I, I hope I can kind of bring that over to you guys, is that uh, she really stands for a change in how fintechs and, and crowd-based uh, beat investment lending funding companies should see themselves in the, in the ecosystem uh, of, of finance and um, try, and, try and see themselves as more partners, especially as they grow up and mature and really get, gather a lot of momentum um, to, to not completely get head on with, with the banks and say, we just have to kick them out. We just have to take their share in this. Um, and instead, try for a longer term, because this was a, this, all this happened over the term of four, four or five years, um, try to, to find someone in there that understands what they're doing, that's willing and open um, for, you, for you to give input, to, to make suggestions. Maybe even do the step that's as drastic and <laughs> as she did and say, hey, why don't you sit on my board? Why don't you actually take action in, or at least give me hint, uh, hints and advice on the actions I should take for my company? Um, and, and go with them for the long, for the long term. Um, the banks, as we know them now, uh, will definitely do and work, uh, do something and work on the products they have. Um, they will start building crowdfunding, crowd lending platforms on their own, um, but see them as partners. Go with them on the long run, uh, try to, to position yourself as a, as a helpful friend that has a, a lot of cultural and, and, and innovative impacts inside of the company that the bank can't even buy for money if they wanted to, um, and make sure they understand that it's helping them if they exchange with you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about it, I guess. A happy Litchi family uh, to say goodbye, and um, thank you very much.